Hey you guys, welcome back to RPO Restorations. Have you recently purchased an 80s or 90s GM collector vehicle? Are you taking yours out of storage for the summer driving season? Or maybe you've been driving yours as a daily for a while. But in any of those cases, I've got an important video for you. Today I'm gonna to show you the three sensors on your GM computer command control system that you absolutely need to check because they degrade over time. Your computer may not be seeing what it's supposed to, and your car may not be operating at its peak performance level. So make sure you pay attention and take a look at these. Let's jump right in and get started. Before we get started, make sure you check out part one of this series. I'll put a link up top and in the description where I give you a very basic overview of the GM computer command control system. That'll bring you up to speed. But now let's jump right in to the number one sensor that degrades on this system. It should be changed at regular intervals. I recommend 50,000 miles, but for some reason, General Motors never included it in the maintenance schedule. And that is your oxygen sensor. Your oxygen sensor determines how rich or how lean your exhaust is, i.e. telling the computer exactly whether it needs to richen or lean out your carburetor or fuel injection system. If that isn't working properly and it's degraded over time, your system won't know what your exhaust is doing it may be richening or leaning out your fuel air mixture without you even knowing it, even though it's wrong. So you make sure you check that, change it out as soon as possible if you haven't already. There are two types of sensors used in this system, a one wire and a two wire. They both operate the same way. The two wire grounds out to the ECM, the one wire grounds out to the chassis, that's it. If you're gonna change one of these out, my little tip is, number one, make sure you use anti seize on the new one. Number two, make sure you start the car first, let it warm up at idle for a couple of minutes, get that sensor in that manifold nice and warm, it'll come out a heck of a lot easier. Oh, and also, make sure you use a genuine AC Delco part. Not because I have any stake in AC Delco, but because they seem to work the best with these older systems. Some of the other big name brands like Bosch tend not to play well with these older OBD1 systems. So if you buy one of them, it's a crapshoot, it might work, it might not. But if you buy AC Delco, you're never gonna have a problem. The second sensor on our list that may not be working right and you may not even know it is your coolant temperature sensor. This sensor tells the ECM when the engine's up to operating temperature so that it can start looking at that oxygen sensor to see if it's time to go into closed loop mode. If your coolant temperature sensor isn't working properly, it's not telling the ECM the car is warm enough, and you're gonna get a check engine light or have other drivability problems. These can degrade over time, not as much as the oxygen sensor, but it's still worth checking out because some GM cars use two coolant temperature sensors, one for the gauge and one for the ECM. So your gauge may be reading right, but your ECM may not be seeing what it's supposed to, because you're using two different coolant temperature sensors. So it's always advisable to get a scan tool, check it to make sure the readings line up, change it out if you need to. If you made it this far in the video, you might as well just move your finger down, move your mouse down, move your cursor down and hit that subscribe button. This way you can follow along with more of these videos as I put them out about those 80s and 90s cars that we love. Also, do me a favor and click that like button down there. This way YouTube shows this video to more people and they can check it out. I definitely do appreciate it and thank you. And the third sensor that needs to be working properly on your GM computer command control system. That is your throttle position sensor. Guys, this sensor is found inside the carburetor or somewhere normally along your throttle body. If you follow your throttle cable up, you'll find it if you own a front wheel drive car. This sensor tells the ECM exactly how much angle you're putting down on the gas pedal. Obviously, that'll play a big factor in the amount of fuel that your car needs to run. These tend to degrade over time or come out of adjustment. If you have a front wheel drive car, it'll usually zero out when you turn the key. So it's usually either working or it's not. However, carbureted cars usually come preloaded, meaning that You'll preload it, there, there's a spring and a screw that you can adjust in the carburetor. And I'll show a picture of where that's located now on the screen. Uh, to say 0.41 volts to start. So your throttle position sensor 
will read 0.41 volts on startup, and that's zero. That's no throttle to your ECM. Then as the voltage changes, that voltage will increase. If that preload isn't set correctly, your ECM is going to get a false reading. It's not going to know how hard or not hard you're pushing down on that gas pedal, and it's going to really mess up your air-fuel mixture. Also, this is another part that can degrade over time. So if you do hook up a scan tool or a voltage tester to check it out, according to your factory service manual, you should see a nice smooth increase and decrease as you play with that throttle cable and put more or less pressure on it. There shouldn't be any binding or big jumps in the voltage. It should increase nice and smoothly as you go up or down. As a quick bonus here at the end, I'll run through some of the other sensors that are in the system, just give a brief overview. But keep in mind, most of these either work or they don't with one exception, and I'll let you know when that is. You usually have a vacuum and a barometric pressure sensor. You might have one, the other, or both. They tell us how much vacuum your uh, manifold's putting out. They also give an air pressure reading to the ECM so it knows whether you're operating at sea level or up high in the Colorado mountains. That'll change your fuel air mixture and your ECM needs to know that information. You always have a tachometer hooked up to your distributor somewhere. That'll usually either work or it's not. That tells the ECM how fast the engine's spinning. You'll have a vehicle speed sensor. GM did it kind of interesting with these. It's not the uh, cable that runs to your speedometer like you see when you're sitting inside the car. It's usually some kind of optical sensor. It has a little spinning wheel with a couple of mirrors, a light, and an optical sensor. Depending on how fast that wheel spins, the light reflects back. That tells the ECM how fast your car is going. Those almost never fail, and when they do, they either work or they don't. You're also going to have a brake, brake switch. That's the one that could fail, and it could stop telling your ECM what's going on with your brake pedal. But usually if those go, 9 out of 10 times, you're not going to have brake lights. That's a $4 part. You could just change it out. Also, if you have a front-wheel drive car, you might have something like a mass airflow sensor. <clears throat> Some of the early GM designs aren't as reliable as the later ones. Uh, they can be a pain in the butt to diagnose, especially when you're having a problem with them, but we'll leave that for another video. So there you have it, the three most important sensors and some other ones that you need to make sure are working properly on your 80s or 90s GM vehicle. If you do this, your system's going to run a lot smoother. You might not have as many emissions problems as you could be, and you're going to get more power out of that admittedly low power drivetrain you probably have in that original car. So guys, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you on the next one.